just to get kicked off the team. There was just always those girls that would just stare at me. Do you really think that I wanna be worrying about your stares and things that you have to say about me when I just got left applying for jobs and trying to graduate? It was so hard to gain the confidence to go and not care if anyone said anything about me and just followed my passion at the time, which was soccer. I can't, I can't give up. I was like, I give up. I can't do this by myself. <laughs> I was graduating and it was really tough for me. And I just remember every bit of it. It was a huge part of why now I have mastered not believing everything that you're told. My favorite sport in school was soccer. That was my passion at the time. That took a lot of my stress away. That took a lot of my, that took my mind off everything. Me and my little brother used to go out to the front and play soccer. And it was so fun because my little bro loved to play soccer and I loved to play soccer. And I always played soccer barefoot and I thought it was cool because we would play street soccer and playing barefoot didn't hurt my feet. I was used to it and I would kick really hard barefoot and I thought it was so cool. We would go out there and practice all day because like, I was training my body to get ready to play soccer. We did daily doubles so my brother was you know, my soccer partner and trainer so we would play soccer. And it was so fun, it was so, like, I just remember having so much fun. I remember one time I got stung by a bee because I was barefoot and it hurt. This is my 2009 sweater when I became a freshman, right before I got pregnant. His sperm donor left and I don't know if I'm ready to get into that part yet. Um, it's just a lot of little things. I just don't know how I'm going to explain that yet, so I'll explain that in another video. I just want to finish off my story of graduating because that's where I left off and was not able to explain. I had just given birth to Isaac and then I trained the summer to play soccer and then I went and played and or I tried out and like it was really hot and I was training really hard and I had a c-section with Isaac so my body was just not ready it wasn't ready like I mean maybe it was but I had gone my body had just gone through so much as a puny little girl like teenager my body went through so much and then I was just here like okay let's play let's run you know I, I didn't want to stop and the doctor was like, you need to sit down. <laughs> I was just ready to get up and go because that was my only time away from being a single mom and just, it was my only time away. So I remember I was training really hard and they were talking about like teams and stuff. I had even purchased my sweater. This is what it looks like. I got number 18. I always got number 7, but that was taken already. So I went with 18. <laughs> but here's my last name, Jimenez. I got pulled aside. And they told me after, like, I had already trained the whole time and everything. Once the season was already ready to start, they were like, Lisa, we need to talk to you after practice. And I was like, okay. They were like, you can't be on the team because you're behind in credits. And I was like, what? I just remember like thinking to myself, are you serious? Because I remember before this happened, before I even got like 
ready to start playing my dad kept saying lisa are you really gonna do this are you sure i want you to be sure before you go and sign up for soccer and we pay for it and everything but he was like i'm gonna go buy you shoes are you gonna do it and i was like yes i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it the confidence that it took to go out in front of all these people on the field to see me walking after having a baby and just being MIA and just dipping and like going to classes in the school or in the separated area like to stay away from all these people I was just like showed up for soccer I just remember that going through my head like oh my god I was, I was like, dang, because the feelings that I had when I would walk to practice, I had to have my brothers watch my baby and then go to practice and show up. The first day of practice, I was so nervous, like I feel that feeling right now that I felt when I first showed up and saw the big circle of girls stretching and I was like okay you can do this like I was telling myself you can do this and luckily I gained some of my old friends back that I just like stopped talking to because I was just like scared and had just gone through so much and they were they're nice girls like they they were there for me and they would even go to my house and you know we hung out and they were the first to like make me feel welcome kim and tanya thank you you guys i remember you guys making me feel welcome I will never forget that. I love that just to get kicked off the team and now what? It was so hard to gain the confidence to go and not care if anyone said anything about me and just followed my passion at the time which was soccer. It was hard because there was just always those girls that would just stare at me like this. This is what made me who I am today because of those stares. I was already going through so much. Do you really think that I want to be worrying about your stares and the things that you have to say about me when I just got left and I'm now applying for jobs and my brothers don't feel like watching my kid, but that's my only babysitter. You guys just had to show up to practice. Before that, I was looking, begging my brothers to watch my kid. Trying to give myself some confidence to keep going and to keep going strong and to not let being a single mom discourage me I'm trying to graduate applying for jobs trying to graduate was just the hardest thing of them all I remember going I remember going to the office to talk to the counselor because I there was some kind of mistake. They were kicking me off the team. A sight like I was already afraid that I wasn't gonna graduate. I was already so afraid of letting my baby down. And I had to go sit down and find out if it was true because I had just came back from having a kid. And I knew that I was behind, but enough to get kicked off the team. 
I went to the office and I was sitting there waiting for the teacher, the counselor to be available to talk to me. And I was so nervous. She called me in and she's like, you know, hey, you had your baby? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, okay, are you still with the dad? And I'm like, no. And she's like, okay. Um, talk about your grades and she pulled it up in the computer and she's like I only had like 3.7 like 3 point something credits and I, I want to say three and a half credits and I was a sophomore and I was like like Day. like she just made me I remember she she didn't put me down but these were just like what I remember her telling me like you only have 3.5 credits and you're a sophomore and you're not on track to graduate and I was like okay if you know me you know I'm really quiet and shy and I was like okay and she's like you can't play soccer if you keep going at this road, you're not going to graduate. She's like, as of right now, you're not going to graduate. And I was like... I was like, okay. So, I went to my teacher, Bob. And Bob was the teen parent teacher, Mr. McBeth. He was there for me when, when I didn't have anybody. He was there for me. I walked in the room. And nobody was there. Everyone was gone. I think it was lunchtime. And I was like, Bob, I'm not gonna graduate. And he's like, What? And I was like, I was like, The counselor told me I'm not gonna graduate. And he's like, What? And I was like, Yeah. And he's like, Yes, you are. And I was like, No, I'm not. He's like, Yes. And I was like, I can't, I can't I give up. I was like, I give up. I can't do this by myself. I can't. Nobody's gonna think that I can graduate anyways. And he's like, I don't give a damn what anybody thinks. You're gonna keep going. And he was like, forget everything she just told you. You're gonna keep going. You were on track. That's just how my school was called you in, told you, and I remember before I got pregnant and they would do that to me, I just, they put, it felt like I was being put down, I was like, I don't even want to do it anymore because you guys are making me feel like a failure already, I kept going, I can't decide if I'm hot or cold, my teacher was like, you're gonna keep going, you can't let that stop you. You're gonna keep going. And I was like, okay. Like, I don't know if you noticed. He, my teacher was my hero. And just no matter what anyone told me, I was like, okay. You're not gonna graduate. Okay. You're gonna keep going. Okay. I just listened to whatever I was told. My teacher said, what is next? And I was like, I need to get a job. I got a job at Burger King. And it was really tough leaving my baby. I worked any chance I got. I hated leaving him so much. I had to leave him for really long days. And I just hated leaving him. But I knew he was in good care because he was with my mom. And my mom is like amazing. I was really let down because I, because I worked so hard 
to get out there and prove people wrong, prove people that I was gonna go back out there. It didn't matter that I had a baby, I was still gonna go play soccer. It really bothered me that I wasn't able to finish proving them wrong and that was because of my credits. My grades were fine, I didn't have enough credits, I just had to quit. And then all these people just saw what it looked like to be that I failed. And that bugged me because I didn't fail, I succeeded and I went on and I graduated with extra credits and that was not easy. I caught up in like five months. I went from three point something credits to like half of what I needed, more than half of what I needed to graduate. And then I ended up, you know, I didn't graduate early or anything, but I kept going, I kept going, working, going home, working on my senior project. I ended up finishing on time. I went from, you're not gonna graduate to, you're on track to graduate. I remember fighting till the very last like week that I had my senior project. I remember giving my presentation and I was so nervous. They told me I passed and I was jumping up and down because you needed to pass that in order to graduate. I put my blood, sweat, and tears into every bit of it. I worked so hard. I didn't have all the hours that everyone else did. So I had to go to work and then go home and then take care of my baby and be up really late nights. And I remember crying to Jason and then I told him I can't do it. It was so hard and I overcame that. I always feel like such a champion when I remember graduating high school on time. That was not easy. And I keep this because it's my trophy. I remember this sweater, this jacket. This cost a lot of money. I even got the fancy jacket. I had just ordered it and received it and was so proud. And then I was told I couldn't be on the team. Today, I tell myself, you can do it. Remember when you used to think you couldn't graduate and you did? That totally like opens my mind because I'm like, I graduated, I can do anything. I used to always listen to what people told me. I think you guys really need to sit and think of what it is you want to accomplish because it's important. It's only going to matter what you want to do. It's only going to matter because that's your dream and no one can take that from you. So to every girl watching, if you're pregnant, you're not just a statistic. If you're not pregnant, please protect yourself because having a baby is not like having a toy. It's really hard. And you also have to think about not only the diapers and the sleepless nights, but we're not ready to be adults. And if I could go back I would never change the way things happened for me. I would never change it. But not everyone is like me. Having a baby is really hard. Sometimes I do wonder, what would it have been like if I waited? Like how far could I have gone in soccer in high school? What friends would I have made in high school? I think it's important to find what your dream is and chase it. Whatever excuses you have, 
recognize them, call them out, realize they're just excuses, say them out loud, realize and become familiar with them because sometimes saying them out loud, when you say them out loud, it really makes you think, wow, that's not why I'm chasing my dream. Wow, that's why I haven't done this and that. That's the reason. Sometimes calling them out helps you understand that it's just nonsense and it's a stupid reason to not follow your dreams and to be happy one day. So don't let people tell you what your dream is. Only you know what your dream is and have faith. Have faith in your dreams because if you don't, no one else will. And you don't want to be like that. You don't want to have zero faith in yourself because that will get you nowhere. It's as easy as flipping the script. As soon as a bad thought enters, flip it. I'm not good enough. I can't make the team. Flip it. I'm good enough. I'm going to make the team. I've trained hard. It's as easy as flipping the script. It's gonna be okay. People don't realize that you're in complete control of your thoughts and emotions. Whatever you feel, think and feel, is gonna come back to you, no matter what it is. If you're thinking negative, bad, and negative, it's gonna come back to you. If you're thinking positive, amazing things, joyful things, healthy things, it's gonna come back to you. It doesn't matter what it is, it has to come back to you. Listen. I haven't found that next level of life, and a simple explanation is, you have a villain working against you, and you don't even know it. The good news, we're going to expose it once and for all. Which wolf are you feeding? I once heard a fable about a Navajo woman who told her grandson a story about how we all have two wolves that live inside of us, constantly battling one another. It starts with the grandmother sitting her grandson down and explaining to him that one of the wolves is jealous. His envy and his soul is malicious and has a scarcity mindset. To that wolf, everything in the world is wrong and unpleasant. He believes that people are mostly bad, things are no good, and that the world is a cold place. As you can imagine, nothing good ever happens for that wolf because it is a negative, pessimistic animal, always seeing things as glass, half empty. Then the woman says to her grandson, but you also have a different, powerful wolf that lives inside of you. This wolf has empathy, love, compassion, positivity, and knows it can accomplish anything it puts its heart and soul into. This wolf sees the bright side of everything and constantly sees things glass, half full. And grandson, this wolf, the powerful wolf, can take you to so many amazing places. Then the grandson looks at his grandmother and says, Well, which wolf wins the battle, Grandma? She replies, The one you feed, grandson. The one you feed. We all have a bad wolf and a villain, as I call it, living inside of us. But we also have this hero just waiting to be released. Here, I'll help you learn how to expose a villain hiding inside you. Discover how it got there and proceed to destroy it. I think that's an amazing story because it's true. It's everything I just tried to tell you. Feed the good wolf and you'll be fine. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna stop. I have big dreams. I have faith in you and I know you can do it. My intentions are always good. I'm still learning. But I've came a long ways. My story is very rough, but those are the best stories to tell when you finally make it and you get to hold that huge trophy and say, I made it. My dreams are beyond anything I could have ever expected or believed that I deserved at one point in my life. And I used to listen to people that told me it was impossible for me. 
and that got me nowhere. My dreams are huge. It's really important to have really big dreams and not to let fear get in the way. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. They're not real. They're in your head. You're letting them stop you. Like my book says, imagine your house is on fire and all your memories, all your experiences are in that house and you can only take, you only have a few minutes to grab all the things you want to take out. What possessions, what, what memories are you going to take out of there? Are you going to take all the bad toxic memories? or the ones you hold dearest to your heart the ones that made you who you are are you gonna take the good ones i'm gonna take the good memories i'm gonna take all the good stuff all the compliments i'm gonna take all the things that made me strong that don't put me down the ones that put you down you want to leave those in the fire burning house and anytime you find that you can't sleep or anytime that you find that you just are starting to stress out you're gonna say any and you hear the, that voice again in your head putting you down those memories putting you down again you're gonna say no I left you in the fire stay away from me. You're going to catch that thought and you're going to say, I see you. And you're going to say, it's not going to work. Bye bye. Because you own your thoughts. Your thoughts don't own you. Have a good night. I believe in you and I know you can do it. Let's believe in each other. I think it's really important to have support because sometimes I feel like and a, a lot of times that I didn't feel like I had enough support, the tiniest gesture, the tiniest compliment allowed me to keep going. It's important to support each other and to have kind words towards each other always. We've all been there where we have been toxic or just dark and it's okay. It's time to move forward, to forgive and forget. Have a good night. I'm proud of you for making it this far. I'm proud of you for making it through 2018. It wasn't an easy year, was it? But this year is going to be better. I'm really proud of you. Have a good night. Please hit that subscribe button. I hope I explained things well if i can think of anything else sometimes i'm just randomly like i should have mentioned that i'll let you know bye like and subscribe